Welcome everybody. This is Marie Zafrangi, the Certified Creator Model Fertility Care Practitioner, Educator, and Supervisor. This is another episode from the book Woman Healed. I'm so grateful for Becky Knapp for joining me today so we can record another episode reading testimonies from the book Woman Healed. Thank you so much, Becky, for being here. Can you please take a few minutes to introduce yourself to let everyone know why you do what you do, please? Well, thank you, Maurice. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Uh, the reason why I got started in fertility care is that I felt very passionate about the pro-life movement. And so in 1994, Phyllis White came to Wichita, Kansas and did an education program for us. And that continued on for the next, you know, we've just continued to teach now for uh, 28 years. And I, uh, in 2011, again, was approached and asked to be, uh, to consider becoming an educator. So I went through the educator program. And so now, you know, I'm teaching for the Diocese of Wichita that whole entire time. Um, I've just been so glad to be able to share this message with women. The main reason why I started teaching was because I felt very inspired and just a passion that women have a right to understand their fertility, that they should not be subjected to having to alter their fertility in some way so that they can be available for sex anytime somebody wants. I think it's a, a huge benefit for women to understand their fertility and then the gift of NAPRO technology that it allows for women to have real answers and real healing. And so that's my main motivation. Additionally, uh, my husband Rob and I have been married for 35 years and we have five children. Our last child, John, would not be with us if it were not for the use of cooperative progesterone replacement therapy. Uh, being able to have my progesterone level checked and be able to have it maintained throughout that pregnancy allowed him to be able to come into this world. And so we just celebrated his 16th birthday yesterday. So thank you very much for allowing me to be here with you guys. That's great. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you. I'm sure so many women are listening and probably they might have gone, have gone through miscarriages and they've never heard of progesterone being able to help them to support their pregnancy. So thank you so much for sharing that. There was another story that uh, we recorded it before that focuses on that. So for all those who are listening or viewing us now, you can just go back and check the YouTube channel and I'll have the link for it in the description box below. Great. Thank you so much, Becky. So what we're doing today, we're going to be reading a story from the section PMS, because I think uh, this is an important topic for a lot of women. Uh, a lot of women don't realize that this is a legitimate medical condition that can be treated. And thanks to create a model for the care system and NAPO technology, we know that women do not have to continue to suffer with that. So for those of you who have the book, we are reading on page 185, The Question That Changed My Life by Deborah Buck. Why is it so dark outside? Why is the sun shining on this beautiful spring day, but I feel no joy? What is happening to me? Am I going crazy? It didn't used to be this way. I should have known from the beginning that something was wrong with the way my ovaries were functioning. Right after I got married in 1981, I immediately miscarried twice. Then my first child, Matthew, was born in 1983. In 1984, during my fourth pregnancy, I bled profusely. The clots were calf liver sized, but by God's grace, I carried to term a little girl, Colleen. I had no bleeding during pregnancy with my third child, Jillian, in 1986, but experienced placenta accreta after her birth. The placenta didn't deliver. In 1988, I bled so much during the first trimester with Mary Kate, I needed to wear diapers. Again, our baby made it. All this time, no doctor diagnosed or ever tested for low progesterone, which could have been the cause of the bleeding. Even having a bachelor's of science degree in nursing didn't give me enough information to learn that I had an ovarian dysfunction and how to prevent these miscarriages. I miscarried again in 1989. All that the doctors would say is that it happens sometimes. 
In 1990, my daughter Anne was born, and after each of these, after the births, the nurses would comment about how unhealthy the placenta looked. That should have been a clue to me and them that I was having a problem with low progesterone. But again, all of the symptoms went over our heads as we weren't educated enough to know differently. In 1991, my sixth child, Bernadette, was born, but again the placenta wouldn't come out. As a consequence, I bled profusely. The nurses and the doctors rushed to start more IVs and get me to the OR for a DNC as my blood pressure dropped precipitously low. I needed two units of blood to bring me back to normal. In 1993, our beloved son Joseph was born. I had no bleeding during that pregnancy, but we had the sorrow of his death from SIDS at two and a half months of age. A year later, God blessed us with Maureen, our eighth live birth. Two years later, at the age of 39, I was experiencing my twelfth pregnancy. At 20 weeks, the doctor found no heartbeat. An ultrasound revealed the baby had died. This really shocked me. All my other miscarriages were at six to eight weeks, so this one was very difficult to bear. My husband flew home from a business trip. We had Mary Agnes buried near Joseph at a local Catholic cemetery. So much heartbreak. So much heartbreak. So much heartbreak. And, and what I see with women a lot of times is a, a similar experience. Physicians tell them that it's normal for them to experience miscarriages and that that's just the way it goes. And I think sometimes there's kind of a judgment on couples who have are able to welcome large families that miscarriage is just to be an assumed part of that and we know with napro technology that it it may not have to be that way um, certainly there are times when um, maybe progesterone may not be able to allow the pregnancy to continue on but many times there are and so getting that knowledge out there and having women to chart so they can see the health of their fertility which is really demonstrated through the fertility care chart is really vital yeah yeah it is back in january i was assistant at an education phase with nancy mcgrath in south carolina and i interviewed the interns there and one of the interns was telling me about her uh, testimony with the creative model how she uh, was at risk of miscarriage and she begged the doctor to give her progesterone and he would not and she ended up miscarrying because he was like, no, you're fine. You don't need it. It's like, unfortunately, even some of them are not open for that education because they just don't believe it would make a difference. Right. In, in, 1990, nine, go ahead. in 1997, at the age of 40, some girlfriends and I were at a local park discussing our prenatal histories and how our fertility signs were changing with age. One friend, Catherine, was an RN who had been trained by Dr. Hilders at the Paul Paul VI Institute, which is now St. Paul VI Institute. I commented to her about the brown spotting I was starting to have prior to my period. She said, oh, that may be a sign of low progesterone. Perhaps that's why your baby, Mary Agnes, died in the mid trimester. You should check it out. I immediately went home and called the Institute and they ordered a series of blood tests to see what the problem could be. The lab values showed an ovarian dysfunction that was causing low progesterone levels. I asked, is there anything I can do to prevent miscarrying in the future? I was informed that all that was needed was to monitor my blood and be put on an HCG regimen prior to conception and HCG and progesterone after conception to keep the placenta healthy so it can nourish and support the young life. Like so many years, so many miscarriages until now they got to discover something. When I got off the phone, I remember crying and crying, grieving over the miscarried babies that perhaps could have been brought to term had I known this before. Along with the grief, I was really angry at the doctors who told me there was nothing that could be done to prevent a miscarriage. I found it incredible that in all my years of nursing training, I had never heard anything that could have helped me see that some miscarriages can be prevented. I immediately became one of Dr. Hilger's out-of-state out patients. Our 13th baby was conceived, and for the first trimester I was mailing blood samples every other week and taking HCG and progesterone shots twice a week. 
Our miracle child was born the day after my 41st birthday on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. We named her Maria. I have a great devotion to Our Lady under the, that title because she helped me through all the losses of our children. After Maria's birth in 1998, something new started to happen. I became depressed. Oh well, I thought I have eight living children and 15, 15 and under. I know no wonder I'm overwhelmed. I'm homeschooling the children and this is simply getting too hard. I was born in sunny Southern California and I'm stuck in the Midwest in winter. Of course I'm depressed. This will pass. But it didn't. As the months went on over the course of the next three years, I became more and more depressed. Even though I knew I had insufficient hormones to be able to carry a baby to term, without hormonal support I was unaware that low hormones can also cause serious depression. I think many women are unaware of the effects um, of a low progesterone level and that it not only can affect our emotional state, but it can also affect our physical state as well. And so it's really important that women be aware of that there's we can do something about this. Not that we're going to try to cycle forever. That's not the idea. But that these emotions that we have are real. But there is something that can be done to help us navigate through that. And we don't have to, we don't have to be in that state all the time. Yeah. And it's not only something that the woman end up suffering with, but everyone around her, her family end up struggling with that too. Yeah. yeah. Over time, I felt I couldn't cope with the children. My joy had turned to a burden. I thought it was because, because of homeschooling or the frequent moves of our household or because of occasional teen attitudes I was dealing with. I rarely shared my internal struggle with others. Only my dear husband and two friends, Katie and Terry, were aware of all the dark feelings I was having and supported me through the tough time. I had a flat effect. I had a passive death wish. I wanted to die. I felt so miserable. But because of my strong faith, I would never do anything about that wish. I felt disconnected from my body at times. I didn't feel as capable as I once did of taking on apostolic projects for the church. I wanted to hide from my kids. I would often rock in my chair in my room alone with my door shut, nursing my baby, staring out at God's beautiful creation and feeling nothing but misery, flat, dark, tired, I felt I was sputtering along on mere fumes with no gas in my tank. I was just thinking as I was reading about her passive death wish, like how many suicides might have, might have been committed by young women in that period of time where like they're going through this depression related to hormonal problem and they don't even realize that. You know, it's really um, a gift of the fertility care system that we have the opportunity to be able to ask our, our breastfeeding moms when we reconnect with them after delivery, to ask them how they're doing, if they're experiencing any postpartum depression or anything like that. And, and if they are having that, then we are able to refer them and affirm them because um, many times it's really difficult for women to do anything. And she witnesses to this. She only told her husband and her two close friends. And it's, it's hard to reach out and ask for help. But if you know that there might be some relief of that, I think that passive death wish really comes from that desire to be yeah. free from that pain. And we all wish that we all, we all want to have that. Um, but you know, being able to offer that to women is a, just a great gift. Yeah, and probably so many women just think it's something in them because yeah. they, they were not told this is a medical right. condition. And that's why they're afraid of sharing about it because it, 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 they've taken it on them as something wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. In 2001, at the age of 44, we decided to have some hormonal blood tests to evaluate that what my fertility picture was like in this premenopausal state. I contacted Dr. Hilgers at the Pope Paul VI Institute once again. The nurse called to let me know that my hormone values were low, very low, so low in fact that I had only one-third of the normal estrogen and progesterone for a woman my age. Then the nurse asked one of the most important questions that had ever been asked of me in my life. In fact, 
a question that ev eventually changed my life for the better. Debbie, your hormones are so very low. Are you ever depressed? I couldn't believe my ears. Yes, I'm depressed, I answered. I'm very depressed. It started three years ago and has gotten progressively worse. I felt that I was coming out of the dark to even admit that. Who admits to being depressed? Obviously, something was wrong with me, but I thought it was my mind, my psyche, not my body. Never in my wildest dreams, even as a nurse, with my history of low progesterone and repeated miscarriages, did I think my depression was biological in origin. Can it be cured? I asked. Yes. We put many women on HCG, and they feel better after, that, after the second shot, the nurse answered. I couldn't believe my ears. That month, I was placed on HCG on peak plus three, five, seven, and nine, four injections every month, which my husband or I administer. These shots have helped my ovaries produce appropriate levels of estrogen and progesterone. My depression disappeared immediately and has not returned. I am now 46 years old. I can laugh again. The children are my joy. My husband said he saw a mask lifted from my face. I love this life. I went to the staff at the Pope Paul VI Institute three years ago trying to find out about my fertility. Because of the awesome expertise of the nurses, they had the knowledge to ask the million dollar question that helped me learn about and leave hormonal depression. Another confirmation of the psychological basis of my depression came to me over a year ago when we were in the process of a move. Due to the, to the hectic time, I missed my medication. The symptoms of depression came flooding back. They disappeared again the next month when I got back on my HCG regimen. God allowed me to go through the dark days of hormonal depression and to find hope in treatment. Now I have been able to help others. When women come to me complaining of depression, I tell them to get a baseline medical exam to evaluate their hormone levels before they assume their depression is only in their minds. The Institute and Dr. Hilders and the staff have helped and will help innumerable women. I, for my part, owe a debt of gratitude to them for the healthy birth of my youngest daughter, Maria, and my deliverance from a serious hormonal depression to a life of joy. You know, when I, when I hear that, um, sometimes women uh, will hear this and they may relate to some of those, um, some of these symptoms and, and um, experiences that she articulated. But one of the things that I think it's important for women to understand is that most physicians are not trained in this regard. Uh, uh, the, the training that a medical consultant receives through the Pope Paul VI Institute education program is so outstanding and really gets to the answers. It follows the path that was, I think, originally designed. Uh, the path of seeking out wellness, seeking out the, uh, the real root of the problem and addressing that underlying problem to alleviate the symptoms. So it's not something that we just have a band-aid approach to, but rather we really work towards correcting the problem. Exactly, exactly. Yes, thank God for Dr. Holgers and the Institute because I'm sure the lives of many, many women have changed due to all their work and helping them with PMS and other reproductive health issues. For those of you who are watching, maybe are not suffering with depression, I'm just going to remind you of all the symptoms that can happen with a woman before her cycle begins. And if they last for a few days, then this is really what we call premenstrual syndrome. So it can be irritability, breast tenderness, bloating, weight gain, carbohydrate craving, tariness, depression, headache, fatigue, insomnia. So some women have all of those symptoms at once. Some of them have specific ones and they can have them moderate or they can have them severe. If you are suffering with any of those symptoms for more than three days before the onset of your menstruation, just know that NAPU technology and created model fertility care system are here to help you. You don't have to keep suffering. Yes, as Becky said, unfortunately, a lot of doctors are not trained to help with this, but thank God we have medical consultants who are, and they can assist you. So you need not to suffer any longer. Just seek out help. You can check more information. You can check cedaroflebanon.com 
the city of Lebanon, FCC.com. So you can connect with a practitioner. You can start charting your cycles. You can even connect with the institute immediately. Becky, any final comments on this story? Um, no, I would just affirm all of those symptoms and that if women are experiencing them or if they have severe menstrual cramps, that's one of the things that we find as well is that sometimes cooperative progesterone, this happens, I, I see this also with um, teenage girls who maybe they have debilitating cramps um, and, uh, you know, certainly they should be evaluated and uh, endometriosis should be ruled out, but sometimes just cooperative progesterone can alleviate many of those symptoms. And so, and it does so in a cooperative way, it's because they have a low progesterone level. So when we're able to add that and they get such a, a great result, it becomes really easy to, to treat that. So, yeah. Definitely. I was thinking as you were reading uh, the 1 million question, are you ever depressed? Like how many girls could really, even women could receive a real help more when they go to therapist or to counselor and they get their hormones checked instead of just getting on medication to treat depression. Very much so, very much so. And sometimes, you know, it's a very individualized treatment and that's why we measure the progesterone levels because that dictates to us um, what the dose uh, that the physician is going to prescribe what that dose is. And it's managed based off of the response to that. So um, I think this is, this is a method that is, it's so individualized to the particular needs of the woman. It really re recognizes her unique feminine genius. Yes, that's true. And it's time to empower women through the knowledge of the created model for the care system and NAPRO technology. And that's why we're doing this series, because you deserve to discover the best kept secrets of the created model and NAPRO technology. Thank you so much, Becky, for joining me for this episode. Uh, don't forget to leave any comments, questions, feedback in the description box below. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.